Think conditional formatting is just for basic color coding? Well, think again. Go ahead and grab your coffee or that secret stash of energy drinks, because today I'm giving you five seriously underrated conditional formatting hacks that'll have your coworkers and your boss asking, how on earth did you do that? Hey everyone, if you're new here, I'm Mike, and over the last decade, I've worked in corporate finance everywhere from brand new startups all the way to the Fortune 100. And believe me when I say I've spent my share of time formatting Excel workbooks. Now, over that time, I've learned some tricks along the way to seriously speed up your formatting and save you hours. The added benefit is that with conditional formatting, all this formatting will happen automatically without you having to lift a finger. And even better, I guarantee you that 90% of people you show will never have seen these before. So you'll get to walk in looking like a superstar. Make sure to stick around to the end because hack number five is something that I used to blow the socks off of a publicly traded company's CFO. He had never seen anything like it and it changed the course of my career. So for number one, I wanna show you how to use icons to really jazz up your budget versus actual analysis or anything else where you're kind of looking at how something is performing versus something else. And we're going to talk icons. There's actually really cool ways you can pull in all kinds of things, emojis, custom sets. We're going to focus on what's built into Excel today because it's right there and ready for you. But just know that whatever kind of icons you want to pull in, you can do that. So we're going to select this set, right? So we've got our budget here. We've got our actuals here. And this is the variance percentage. And this is a budget by department, you know, marketing, sales, all of that. So what we want to do is we want to quickly show our business partners how is everyone performing. So we're going to go to conditional formatting and we're going to apply an icon set and we're going to apply one of my favorites, which is the traffic lights. All right. Now it automatically puts some settings in here. You'll see, okay, it looks like if it's positive, it's green. If it's a little negative, it's yellow. And if it's really negative, it's red, but we can actually go in and tweak that. So we're going to go up here to manage rules. Here it is, we'll double click on that, and now we can see what specific values it's applying it to. So this is saying if it's greater than or equal to 67%, it's gonna be green. If it's greater than or equal to 33, it's gonna be yellow. So I personally like doing conditional formatting with the numbers instead of the percentages. That way, no matter what format you put in here, it's always gonna work for you. So we're gonna say if it's over zero, then it's gonna be green. If it's greater than or equal to negative point two point Oh, two. There we go. We're going to apply that. Okay, so now if it is between zero and less than 2% bad, it's going to be yellow. If it's more than 2% bad, it's going to be red. That means if it's a little down, you know, something to keep an eye on. If it's really down, that's heading in the wrong direction. I'll also show you really quickly, if you want to change this, you can easily pop this over to a different icon set. Let's say that we just want to go to the flags. Boom, there's that. And just as easily, we can go over and say, oh, let's, we want to do this arrows kind of heading in a neutral direction, heading up, heading down. So really easy to flip between all of that. Let me ask you, do you have a favorite Excel hack? If so, make sure to drop it in the comments and I might feature it in my next video or on our Twitter account. So now we're looking at, we've got our departments down the left, we've got all the months across and we're gonna wanna highlight. So we've got all of our departments down the left, we've got all the months across the top and what we wanna do here is we wanna stop if true. Now this is a small data set, but the reason we wanna stop conditional formatting from calculating is it does take a lot of workbook resources and it can slow it down. So in larger data sets, if there's something that you don't want conditional formatting applied to, you wanna make sure that you stop it if a certain condition is true. So what does that look like? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come here and we're gonna say highlight cells equal to zero, we're going to set a custom format, we're going to fill it with nothing, All right, and then we're going to come in and we're going to apply if it is in the top 10%, we're going to make it green, and if it's in the bottom 10%, we're going to make it red. Now we want to come back to conditional formatting. We want to manage the rules and we're going to move cell value to the top. So it's the first one. And we're going to say stop if true. So what this is going to do is it's going to make sure that the conditional formatting does not run on any cell that's zero. Obviously you can't see it because they are blank. That's kind of the point, but 
a third of these cells are empty, so you just saved a third of the computational power. Now, assume that this is an actual corporate size workbook where you've got tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions of rows. Just think about the power that that's going to save of eliminating it. So it's very important if you're working with large data sets and there's cells where you're never going to want conditional formatting on, make sure to shut those off using stop if true. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to hit that like button. It's certainly faster than waiting for your spreadsheet to load and it will really help me out. Next up, this is a feature that I absolutely love using and it's data bars. If you're looking at things that are in a percentage or kind of over a trend, you can use data bars to show where they fall along that. So here we've got all of our departments again, we have their annual budget and we have how much they've spent so far and that's weighted as a percentage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our conditional formatting we're going to put in data bars and we're going to have them do a fill based on how populated they are. So let's pick something, you know, it's budget. So let's go to, let's go to red. Awesome. So now we see 91.4%, almost the whole cells filled. Awesome. 55.8%. It's halfway. And you can see relative to one another, how the different cells are doing. If you really want to see, you can always kind of spread it out and then they'll start to get a little bit bigger. So you can really see the difference. You can quickly pop that over. There's some different formats. You've got things like solid fill down here. Um, I personally think that you know the gradient looks really nice for presenting. If you're going to print it, I like the solid fill. But it's a really quick way to show how things are trending or how you're performing, especially if you're looking at kind of you know draining out budgets or completion rates, things like that. Very quick way to access that. Next up, I'm going to show you how we would write a formula for your own condition of formatting. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the conditioning formattings in depth. There's a lot of great resources, including on the F9 Finance website you can check out, but I'm going to show you how you would write and apply a formula. And in this case, we've got a list of expenses provided by all the departments, but the departments are notorious for duplicating entries. So we want to go through and make sure that there's no duplicated entries. First of all, we have to kind of join these together because if I just put it on the dollars, there might be some instances where the dollars are the same, but they are different entries. So we want to go and see if the department expense and the amount ever repeat themselves. And we're going to do that with a really quick tool of just putting and in between them. I use this all of the time to look for duplicates. You look for unique items. We're going to copy that down. And then this is what we'll apply our conditional formatting on. So we're going to go up to conditional formatting. We want to click new rule because we're going to do a formula. And then we're going to go to use a formula to determine which cells to format. So we're going to go ahead and put in our formula. Now this is a formula template. I like to save templates on the side just so I don't have to you know, think about it every time. Um, obviously range and cell are not what we're actually looking at. So we want to go in here. We want to do, it's going to be dollar sign F, dollar sign five. That's the start of the range. We're going to want that to come down to 158, so F158, and then we're going to want it to be the current cell, so it'll be F5, and we'll hit OK. There we go, so let's see if this caught it. So here's marketing, marketing campaign 1031.74, yep, here's a duplicate, 48.54, yep, here's a duplicate, so it got all of them. So that's a really quick and easy formula you can do. Now, you might be asking, why would we highlight the duplicates when we can remove it? Well, you want to, for, you want to, in this case, look at them all because you want to understand which departments are struggling with this because you don't want the data in there. Sometimes you don't want to just remove the duplicates, um, although eventually you would want to do that to work with the data. But you want to go through and make sure that the data is accurate and try to fix it at the source if possible. So that's why we would commonly be highlighting duplicates and not just removing them. And lastly, number five, this is where we're going to use heat maps. And this is where I blew the socks off of a CFO because he hadn't used this method before. I built this really cool instrument to look at different balance sheet accounts and how they were performing. And I presented it in this heat map dashboard format because there was just so many different accounts and so many different combinations where things might be working or not working. And nothing was objectively good or bad. It was all relative to prior performance and relative to the other accounts. So heat maps are a really good way to do that. So to build a heat map, you'll see we've got product categories down the side, we've got countries across the top, and we want to understand how they're performing. So we're going to highlight this. And for a heat map, we're going to use color scales. And we want to use a green, yellow, red color scale, and it's going to show the relative performance. Boom, just like that. So your eyes are immediately drawn to the strong performers. You know, we've got furniture in the USA is doing great, uh, electronics in Japan, kind of in the middle of the road. You'll see, you know, France, Australia furniture kind of in the middle of the road. And then 
the bottom of the road. We've got groceries, pharmaceuticals. And here's the really cool thing. I'm showing you a fixed data set, but if you have a dynamic data set where you're doing drop downs or you want to pop this into a pivot table, you can actually update the data set automatically and all of the conditional formatting will automatically update. So it's not that it just saves you time this one time, it saves you time every single time your data set updates and adjusts. So if you build this into a file you do every month, you never have to touch the formatting again. How cool is that? If you take away just one thing from this video, it's that you shouldn't be spending time formatting your Excel workbooks every single time you touch them. Anywhere that you can, you wanna set up conditional formatting. And really, as you've seen, conditional formatting can do almost anything and it can create things that are you know just about presentation ready or be used in kind of Excel dashboards you can put together. So think about it if there's things you're doing where every time you have to send out a report or update a workbook, you're adjusting formatting and tweaking things, there's probably conditional formatting that can handle that for you. And when you build that in and save time, you're automating the formatting so you can spend time on what really matters. That's all for today. If you enjoyed these hacks, make sure to subscribe and like the video so I can give you more secrets that'll help you look like the office genius. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Until then, this is Mike signing off from F9 Finance. Cheers.